Hi, um, welcome to the second um, debate of Berlin Critics Week this year. Welcome to the um, program Beyond Recognition, or rather the debate. Um, the program, of course, consists of more than the debate, um, but right now it's debate time. Um, you will be able to watch the two films connected to this program. Um, first in, first out by Zacharias Sitoni and Intimate Distances by Philip Warnell until the end of the week, until Sunday night. And we hope you do. Um, actually, I hope you already have, um, because now we are about to go deep into them and discuss how they, how they connect with each other, how they are related, and what it's all about with the recognition. Um, and um, I would like to introduce the program because um, it's for us a first try. Um, this year we've, we've connected with some festivals um, and started new kinds of collaborations um, inspired by the situation we are all currently in, at least the festival and cinema landscape is in. Um, we were curious how festivals dealt with the, sit with the situation. Um, and we found many interesting strategies festivals had developed and um, we approached um, some festivals which had not yet collaborated um, to collaborate in new ways and we invited them to, su uh, them to suggest films to us um, and then get together to discuss what kind of programs could be created. Um, so the, so the program tonight is basically a result of um, a collaboration with two festivals, the Duisburger Filmwoche, represented by Alexander Scholz, and the Black Canvas Contemporary Film Festival, rep uh, represented by Pedro Segura. Um, Segura and sorry. And, um, it was, a, it was a really fun exchange and I can't wait um, to hear the two uh, discuss with the, with the other guests of the night, which I will not yet introduce, but um, I will introduce our moderator tonight, um, Janaina Oliveira, who, is, um, who was also part of our conference this weekend. Hi Janaina, um, it's great to have you with us. Um, hello everybody. And um, I would say the floor is yours. I, um, exci I'm excited about your debate and we will see each other later. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Janaina Oliveira. Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm a film programmer and scholar, born, raised, and actually in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, this is my first time participating uh, at the Berlin Critics Week. As Dennis mentioned, I was at the conference uh, during the weekend and now I'm back to moderate this conversation. And so far it's been a very, very you know, amazing experience. Uh, so I want to thank Dennis, uh, Petra and all the Critics Week uh, team for the invitation and the care during those, this, the last days. Um, so you're here tonight. Berlin's night because here in Rio it's 4 p.m. and it's a very sunny day. <laughs> and um, to uh, at this panel, Beyond Recognition, after watching, I hope you watch it, the films. First in, first out, uh, directed by Zacharias uh, Zituni, uh, presented as Dennis mentioned in cooperation. Oh my goodness, how do I say this? Duisburger 
am I correct, Alexander Film Week? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and Intimate Distance, directed by Flip Warnell, uh, presented in Confederation Black Canvas with Black Canvas Contemporary Film Festival. H here with me, uh, we, uh, we have Sandra Bonner, Alexander Scholz, uh, Pedro Segura and Pascal Capitola. I hope I said the name close to the reality. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll read uh, everyone's bios just to situate our audience tonight, and then uh, we can start the conversation. So I'll start by Sandra. <laughs> uh, Sandra studied uh, in the directing for documentary film at the Film Academy Baden Wurttemberg. Her first feature, The Impossible Picture, received multiple international awards, and most recently, the German Film Critics Award for Best Feature Film of 2018. Her, her graduation film, The Trouble with Being Born, has its world premiere at the Seventh Berlinale. It uh, in the encounter sections and was awarded to the special jury prize. Welcome, Sandra. Uh, Alexander Scholz studied literature in Bonn, Paris, Madison, doctor student at her University of Bochum, author and editor of a magazine that I can't say the name because it's German. Please help me with that later. <laughs> Lecturer and uh, and he worked since 2013 at Duisburg Film Week with Protocols Press and Creations. He's also the head of the archive project uh, named Procult.de. Uh, Pedro Segura is a Mexican programmer, film critic, and distributor. He's co-founder La Ola Cine, a film distribution company basic, based in Mexico City. His text about cinema has been published on Cinemascope, Film Comment, Movie Notebook, and editorial efforts from Locarno, Viennale, Mar de Plata, among others. He has worked, at, at worked as a programmer for Black Canvas since 2018 and Diamond Western Cine since 2020. He has collaborated in, in curatorship with programs of DA Films, Cinemateca Nacional de Mexico, and uh, Berlin Critics Weeks. Last but not least, we have Pascal Capdolan who has been a film uh, sound engineer for feature and documentary film production since 1995. Uh, as a senior lecturer in sound, he has been teaching at German Film and Television Academy since 2019. His understanding of sound design aims to consistently shape the auditorial layer from the first line to the script to the final, aud final audio mix. In 2019, he worked as an assistant director for Philip Schaffner's feature film debut, Europe. Other directors has, he has worked with included uh, Fatih Akin, uh, Angelina Macrone, Epstein Friedman, and Eric Sanchez. As, between 2011 and 2014, he worked in Central Africa as a media consultant for European Union and NGO media. So welcome you all. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you tonight. Um, let's start, you know, we, we exchanged a few emails uh, recently talking about the team and I believe we all agree that uh, Beyond Recognition is a very open <laughs> way to approach those films with a, a thousand of possibilities. And, but before going there, I was, uh, I mentioned to you before that as a programmer for me and the first time being here, it was quite interesting to see this, uh, this proposal from Critics, Critics Week to put, you know, two festivals in dialogue and, you know, having the programmers of these festivals to comment the, the section. So maybe I would love to hear Alexander and Pedro on that, how, how is for them to, how was this work and how is for them, for you both to see these two films uh, that you've programming previously in a different dialogue now here in this um, new frame or how is it so new or very different from the first time they were present in your festivals? Can we go? You decide who starts, feel free. Please, Alexander. Uh, you muted. Uh, for me, it was um, 
yeah, first of all, it was a privilege to be asked to be a part of this. And uh, the Duisburger Film feels uh, very honored to be uh, featured in this context. And uh, yeah, for, uh, for me, it was um, yeah quite a... a um, and quite an experience to see a, a, to have a film in the program of the Duisburger Film Woche, which um, ends uh, by saying it's okay not to talk about something, but nonetheless uh, really sparks discussion. And uh, yeah, for me it was um, great to uh, further this this discussion in having the film. In, in a dialogue with uh, uh, with on the one hand another film and on the hand another festival because I think uh, uh, first in first out as well as intimate distances uh, are both films uh, which uh, deal with, um, with which are kind of in, in search of stories and they might make this search of a story transparent in uh, how they present it and uh, I think this uh, this way to make uh, in a very different way but uh, the way to make the search of uh, a topic and uh, the question who talks about it on screen off screen uh, um, yeah, to talk about this in this broader context uh, seems to me very, uh, uh, very promising and very interesting. And uh, especially uh, concerning first in, first out, I was uh, intrigued by the thought of uh, having a film which, um, yeah, deals with a private context, uh, with, with a private experience in a um, political context. Uh, um, yeah, for me, for me, there was a, an ultimate connection to intimate distances, which kind of does the same, but uh, in a very, very different way, in a different setting, uh, and uh, with a whole different uh, connection of the private and the uh, public sphere. And uh, this, for me, was uh, kind of a starting point uh, um, from which I, I thought these films can get into a nice dialogue and uh, yeah, first talking to uh, Pedro about uh, this connection was uh, uh, revealed some other connections with uh, which we uh, probably get into later. But uh, yeah, that for me was a starting point of uh, a film which uh, from a film which sparks conversation, but says it's okay not to talk about it and have, have this private and public sphere interconnected. That was for me the, um, yeah, the most intriguing thing about the connection of these both uh, films. Thank you. Pedro? Sure, thank you, Jemima. Thank you, Alexander. Hi, everyone. You know, uh, for us, it was a complete surprise for us, uh, like the invitation, because Black Campus is an emerging film festival. We don't have the tradition that this broker holds, and to ma be matched with a festival that is historically relevant in the German and, and European context was really important for us, and like a we are completely flattered by it and we are really thankful. And later on to see, because um, we, we choose this intimate distance from uh, various films that we believe we can represent our attempts in Black Canvas, or what we believe it's important to show to the Mexican or local audiences. And the film that you said uh, in your question that it was a different kind of context in Black Canvas, it was shown as part of the main competition that it's uh, New Horizons that is focused into the an attempt to be a thermometer of the um, emerging uh, or probably even now established uh, uh, new attempts of exploring in cinema that we believe in, in a way intimate distance and manage really well. And now to see it here in a different context, it's really, really interesting because it gets the, with inside, inside, inside out, it gets like uh, redimensioned in a way, it gets like another kind of context that it's not only the aesthetic of the formal that we try to explore in the competition, but it goes to, to so many layers that, of course, as Alexander say, I think we're going to have to talk about it. And that goes from the human experience to the recognition, that kind of aspects of representation, etc. But yeah, well, for us, I think um, during this uh, matchup or uh, double feature, what I found more interesting was to find someone 
of course, with globalization and it's already settled down, but to, to find really the, the discussion with Alexander and with Dennis with the, that was in that uh, exercise, what's I think, and Claudio, the, the artistic director of Black Canvas, was really, really interesting because we are all way on the same channel. We, we, all, we all not see the same things, but we were already, all the four of us were interested in the same aspects of the films and we found uh, really easy to find that these films could be a, a really magnificent connection between each other. And I think that's another kind of thing that it's uh, really great about these films and uh, I don't want to put that in the context because it's not really a cinematic graphic aspect, but they're both uh, really human in a way. So it's really easy to connect with them and to explore all the cinematic aspects from that point of view. And I think that we were all locked down in our houses and to face these films in, from that aspect, I think it was really relieving in a way. But yeah, that's the thing. It's more about the context than about the connection, but yeah. Yes, but I, I think we, you know, it's, it's good to bring the, the human part of it, you know, because I think it's also, relates a lot with the cinematic choices and um, in thinking about that because uh, in our email conversation I think uh, Alexander brought this up like how if I got it right how somehow the films works as um, possibilities as devices for us to not only approach people but then accepting the uh, week's uh, provocation thing <laughs> beyond take us somehow beyond um, recognition and or even to a little bit challenge ourselves in what we recognize or what we understand about those characters that the films the both films are somehow uh, approaching and that was for me it was kind of the first thing uh, about first in, first out, it's how, because I think I related to film through intimacy, how they somehow seek or propose or try to, to reach uh, uh, in different ways on different perspective, uh, per perspectives, possibilities of intimacy with those characters. One is a kind of familiar one, but at the same time, they are so close, but they, there's a gap in between. You know, that somehow the film, I'm talking about the short film, first scene, first out, um, uh, somehow they are trying to, you know, the father-son relation, trying to understand and, and to, to break the generational gap and the perspectives about the, the present and the, the past. And in the other way, you have um, that woman walking through the streets uh, in New York, crossing people and somehow posing a question that at it's a kind of performance of what she's asking. So when, what happened is that if, if you had had the experience that you're doing something and something crosses as she's crossing <laughs> the people's ways and, and, and what changes and what comes next. But I, I see that from very different, you know, uh, distant places. And that's why, you know, makes me feel how you feel about it. Uh, for example, Sandra, I didn't get a chance to watch your film. Sorry about that before, because sorry, I'm going to be honest, but I have this long conversation with Petra Palmer from um, uh, Critics Week. And she was telling me how this for you, this relationship, this intimacy relationship with the camera is something very uh, important for you when you work. So I was wondering how you felt about that, uh, watching both films. Um, I think that's a core question also in my work, but I, I had the chance to see uh, Intimate Distances still in the cinema at the uh, Viennale, oh. and, uh, which I enjoyed a lot, of course, back in the days, uh, as you know. And uh, I was in the cinema and I, and of course you have some associations, you're walking in there and uh, I had to think of uh, Chronicles of a Summer, of course, because a woman walking down the street um, encounters strangers or even like, like you sit there and films pop up like uh, pictures of the old world, you know, and you think about the relationship between people, like everyday people nowadays, towards a camera and a camera team and uh, about a relation how it was in those uh, iconic films, so to say. And in a way, something is of course lost. And it seems like you always need to invent new tricks to 
kind of get to see the real person or uh, an ambivalent uh, image of a person you want to portray. And I think that both films, of course, you have, uh, I mean, what chances do you have as a documentary filmmaker? Either you know uh, your subject, your protagonist very, very well, so you can direct the person or bring it into a, a place uh, as a son brings the father to a working place, as we see in First In, First Out, where you can really interpret uh, as because you know the person very well um, and therefore can show some kind of truth behind it. Or you can make the person forget that there is a camera, which is, a, of course, a big approach in uh, um, uh, documentary filmmaking. Or you make it like uh, Philip uh, Warnell does, you don't even show them that there is a camera. And uh, I think that's just a very interesting conundrum, of course, also in the cinema verite, that right now you cannot uh, go back to this. So you always have to think about the formal aspects of the film and you do this obviously automatically as an audience. And the difference of that shows you some kind of truth, I think. And I mean, I was struck by uh, intimate distances also. I was really surprised about how polite and open people reacted. I mean, if you break it down, a woman walking down uh, the street and counting strangers and asking them very directly questions about if they ever uh, lost their track, you know, I don't know if I would be that open, if I would not feel like an agenda is there. Or, I said uh, the same to Petra when we were talking, like, I don't know if I'll stop and, and answer so kindly and yeah. so openly. Or you would feel like, okay, there's maybe she wants to introduce me to Jesus or whatever comes from your experience then that you bring up. So I was very, uh, yeah, I think she has a very charismatic uh, way to do so, uh, Martha Wollner, well, obviously, it's her profession also. Uh, but, of course, you see that it has to be a lie because uh, there are, of course, encounters, uh, or I believe that there were encounters that maybe were not that successful and it's a choice to not show them that I perfectly understand because it's not about uh, showing the truth or you cannot do that. So what is it then about, you know, what is the, what does it do, this film, I thought to me, and I had the feeling that on, on the surface, it's in a way, uh, of course, shows the power configuration of castings, as we know it. I mean, obviously, going down there. And, of course, also it shows us uh, problematical, stereotypical uh, images that we have or that cinema shows us. And maybe then I had a feeling, secondly, comes uh, the, it's, it's a film about intimacy and distance. And that's what... Yeah, that's what, what, what kept me watching it. And, and how was it for you, Pascal? You, you mentioned also in our email exchange, it was a little bit broad to talk about, you know, beyond our cognition and maybe you rather more address things in a sense, thinking about this relationship between how films create proximity and distance. And if you could, you know, come on that, thinking of that up through sound as your expertise, because sound was also something that was very intriguing me and in both films in different ways, but with the options they made, um, mainly in uh, intimacy distance. So if you could address something on that, I would appreciate it. Mm, yeah, thank you for that. Um, thanks for being part of the panel. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, First, I would uh, speak about uh, intimate distance because uh, um, it was uh, after having watched uh, many films uh, in a day uh, that I uh, started to watch uh, intimate distance and uh, um, I've been amazed at what it had uh, done for what it did for me, to me. Uh, it was uh, um, for sure about intimacy um, because uh, you you have the, the camera that creates this distance but you have... Uh, uh, this uh, typical uh, microphone that uh, Martha didn't even hide, but uh, um, that opened uh, a channel. 
uh, of intimacy of flow of uh, you've been both uh, telling uh, y you would uh, you wouldn't know if you would stop and uh, and speak uh, so openly what is common in both films is the filling gap you know, the filling the gaps of uh, of the untold um, um, filling the gap um, through because there was for example a choice of not even have um, the the background uh, sounds very place where his father is walking but um, just doing the choice of having only the, the those voice his voice of the uh, mother and uh, and feeling him and his lack lack of intimacy, his lack of knowledge of his father through um, all the, his uh, choices, image and uh, and sound. So for me, I, I enjoyed having uh, the both film uh, after one after the, another and to feel the the really different way how they approach this uh, um, this need, this quest. Yeah. <clears throat> Also that, um, you know, uh, Sandra was talking uh, about, uh, she asked Ned, what uh, could, uh, could, could a documentary filmmaker, what's the, what are the possibilities and the places where the places themselves, maybe uh, we could think a little bit, um, where are those filmmakers and how they place themselves? Sandra uh, brought, um, I forgot the name, the film that you mentioned. Um, uh, as a, Thank you for the summer. Yes, but also I thought, for example, uh, about uh, Giovanni, uh, Jatovia's Gary Giovanni document. I don't know if you have seen it. It's pretty much the, the, the same idea, but uh, different because since they're asking people, black women in, um, in, in Bronx, I believe, or Brooklyn, um, uh, if they feel safe. Uh, so she's just asking the same questions. Do you feel safe? And, but she's the one asking, of course, she has a wig, it's her, but not, it's also a character, but she's there asking. So I would like, maybe we could address a little bit thinking about those uh, places uh, of the, the, and their options and how they related uh, to the, this uh, proximity, distance and intimacy. And of course, not, uh, not forgetting that so, pretty much almost 100% male uh, universe in both films. So, so that's a, for me, there's also a question addressing um, uh, masculinity in a more sensible, maybe fragile way. I don't know, just sharing some ideas. If you have comments, maybe we can turn the way around. Maybe the programmers could uh, address something And that about what you said about the places, but also what Pascal said about the need to talk. I mean, if we compare both films, uh, there is uh, no need of uh, Zacharias' father, obviously does not have the need to talk, even though it is a place where he could feel safe, he could not be uh, uh, see, you know, with his son. And so I find that that's what I meant before. I I I did not mean that uh, that you have to hide the the objects to get some truth. I think that's just a common way to do it, um, because Zacharias, for example, does not do it. He obviously he he lets us see it's that he, uh, that he hides the zoom, but he lets us see it, and his father obviously knows it. And uh, what I <clears throat> what I found interesting is that he still is not able to, or does not want to talk about it. And it's the search, it's yes. the search of patterns, of meanings. Like you, you want to, you want to uh, get this narration straight of your family and of your roots, obviously. You want to have read something into that your father who had this traumatic experience um, of uh, being sent back, uh, you know, and not being able to stay here and uh, have a meaning in that, that he is now unconsciously or consciously at working at this place, as the sun says, uh, where, he, where also people are sent back, you know? But for the father, there is no meaning in there. And what I found so fascinating in this film, and I really love that uh, great showdown of this 
grand pile of stones where you, I mean, everything you see, you, you want to have a meaning in there uh, as yeah. a speaker and as an audience and you read and you're like, ah, what does that mean now? And uh, of course, him asking the question uh, kind of gives us the opportunity to not think about it. But uh, then we realize that there is no pattern behind that, that he did not, or maybe there is, but unconsciously. And that's what I found uh, quite interesting. And, and just, you know, I'll come back for the question before, later, but just not to uh, miss that what you're saying, because if you go to the, the story, you know, he, he, he didn't, uh, he just, he, he waits for the last minute to really ask what he wants to know. He tells you everything about the relationship, about everything that happened, and you get very into it. But he has really one question. So it's a kind of, you know, that's generational, you know, confrontational almost. So how, how can you work here doing this? How do you feel? How you don't feel sad or bad about this and, and this seek of meaning and and he's only affection so I love you I don't want to talk about it you see you see my son I'm good <laughs> and like I think the the rocks in that sense they are they are a great metaphor that you know sometimes we look for meaning all the time but you know things are just there and it's okay to be just there I don't know just me thinking about <laughs> the films but anyway please Pedro and, no, yeah, uh, that, that, sorry, uh, that detail, uh, detail that you uh, just announced about the final aspect of the film as when said inside out, I think it's uh, the two filmmakers are really clever and they absolutely, it's visible that they know exactly what kind of devices and mechanisms they want to use, but at the same time it's visible that they are exploring, even for example, Pascal was talking about how clear the sound works in both films and in the construction of their own fictional universe more than uh, trying to be realistic. They're really clear that they're working in a fiction, a fictional aspect. Uh, but at the same time, they're uh, planning a lot of questions in the way I think uh, the mechanisms are questioning itself constantly. Uh, I, and, uh, and I found that uh, really beautiful and what allows us to match them in a way, because in, if you, we can see it in too many ways, like, oh, they are in a way kind of similar in the way they have, a, they have this yin and yang aspect of one, it's, uh, trying to approach the most intimate personal, personal character in your life, that it's your father. But it's so, the, the distance is gigantic and it's like uh, this figure that's completely unknown. And the other side, you, you have Marta, that it's this key that opens every single human being that steps in the way in the, just a crack of fingers. And, but it's a completely unknown at the reach of your hand and what you have known your whole life, impossible to, to approach. And, and this, uh, the Zacharias film, I, I found it so touching, so beautiful, because the camera humanizes the father in a way. It's a way that he managed to embrace his father. And in the other way we have, um, and I, I, I discussed this once with Philip, that is like, uh, like, and I come back to it after the reflection of Sandra, the, about the how, when you show the camera, it's really visible that it's a contrast between what you're framing and the camera and the, or the subject in between the camera. Here in a way, Marta works as the camera because as Pascal said, is the mic there. There is no thing that you're hiding anything. The, the thing it's really visible and it's, I'm confronting you in a fictional and I'm trying to go to what place and precise place as a human being that is exploring in a way. And yeah, Mar Marta, I think it should have a, a co-direction in a way because she, pulls all the strings in the film. Of course, there's a lot of more constructions in, in cinema. But yeah, I lost my track, sorry. That was my point, you know. You got it. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> so, Alexander, you join yeah, us on that. Yeah, um, yeah what Sandra <laughs> says, uh, uh, said about, uh, like, uh, when you layer perspectives, then uh, there's a greater chance to get uh, some kind of authenticity uh, that rings very true to me concerning uh, first in first out especially and um, uh, but I uh, I really have the feeling that uh, the filmmaker is um, mm, yeah really searching for for meaning not only uh, by kindly asking or slightly pushing his father to uh, to tell him something but it's also uh, for me very interesting how um, 
how there are some uh, yeah some things that, that work kind of in parallel like uh, when the mother is talking about how she waits and uh, how she waited in front of the prison and we see him just leaving this container or uh, we have this uh, story about uh, all the paperwork and the, and, and the di biography of deportation and we see uh, his father like rearranging the prices for the uh, for the food and uh, rearranging uh, or arranging um, which flight gets uh, which food I mean uh, there are these slight connections which uh, show us that there's uh, um, there's an active uh, search and uh, for meaning and uh, there's uh, and I think the film doesn't hide that uh, he's searching for meaning and that uh, is very humanizing to me and uh, uh, the way um, the uh, the mother is talking like uh, she also uh, is 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 very uh, reflective of what she's saying and she's uh, marking her own uh, talking about her husband as in uh, talking about him from a German very from the outside and very safe perspective and uh, um, I. Uh, there's on the one hand the intimacy of of this um, of the story, and on the uh, on the other hand the intimacy of the people how they are inter interconnected. And I I um, I like this very much, especially how it's uh, how it's uh, communicated by the use of the camera. I mean, it, it's it's um, Zacharias uses the same ca uh, camera with with which uh, his father filmed him, and now we see this dropouts and this um, and this lack of memory kind of made visible in the image, and uh, that was. Um, yeah, that was very, really touching to me, this uh, not being able to talk about things, but uh, the camera as a, as a device to, uh, on the one hand, um, trying to come near somebody, but on the other hand, like have a technical marker that uh, shows that uh, the approach to show somebody is as uh, vulnerable as the memory of something. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I really liked about that film, and that kind of um, is a whole other power dyna dynamic, as in uh, intimate distances. Like like you said, I mean, uh, she's uh, she doesn't have a bag, but she has a microphone. She is uh, obviously in search for something uh, um, in the street as well, and uh, approaches people with uh, with with. Uh, these kind of direct questions, which uh, which only come in first in first out at, at the really end, uh, at the at the end. But this uh, this approach to people to say, uh, yeah, thank you, like when she doesn't get what she wants, and uh, um, and the guy says, okay, ne next question. So uh, this is a kind of uh, artificial way to get close to people, but this seems to work in public space and. Uh, I was um, especially uh, concerning the situation we're all in right now. It, it, it's really um, interesting that the one time she's indoors, she only uh, she sees groups of people and has kind of nobody Nothing. to talk to and goes yeah. back on the street and, uh, and, and finds people to approach. And uh, yeah, I, I like this dynamic very much. Yes, and this dialogue between um, uh, open spaces and and freedom and who to talk to, also for me was something um, particularly in um, intimate spaces um, when when the stories are start to be told when that voice starts talking and you just because for me I, I, I it took me a while to connect or not to connect but to relate to both things so I had the feeling that I was following you up two things at the same time at the same time I was looking to her walking on the streets and doing her thing choosing people and then that uh, voice that starts told, uh, telling stories about related to criminal records incarceration and somehow being locked up and people walking on the streets so this is also something that was, how, how was that for you? 
and uh, because we're talking too much about her and her approach and the, the you know, because also there is a sound thing that's uh, abrupt changes that takes you to one space, to other space, to the place where the voice is, to the street again. And then you listen to the sound of the, the, her, her t-shirt, her uh, on the mic and everything. So everything is just like, it was a pretty intense for me. So how was it? You know, for you, maybe Pascal, could you start and then we can move forward? Um, yeah, for me, uh, I, I mean, I must say, uh, I'm uh, a little bit, uh, I've got a professional pr problem with that because uh, I, uh, I'm looking for uh, the way uh, they decided to work. Yeah. Um, but as soon as I stopped that and I, um, I let myself into the, the story, I found uh, the relationship bet between this very male voice and uh, the story uh, told and um, her, uh, and her um, also because, because um, her appearance, I mean, she is uh, um, a little uh, person, but uh, a mother type, yes, a mother type. So she opens uh, uh, clear for me, it was a direct relationship to this voice that I've been listening to. And uh, after a while, I made this connection. And uh, to put it back to the uh, to the film of uh, Zakaria, um, it is uh, very fast that you understand the relationship between the, the three, uh, no, first the two person and afterwards the third person. But the, um, the on intimate uh, distances, the the distance that is created uh, through um, because this is also an audible distance we are listening uh, to um, uh, uh, sound elements uh, and uh, to um, to noises that are not that seems not to uh, to belongs uh, to the to the frame to the jgs and uh, after a while you've got the feeling oh no no you are listening to to her directly because of our mic and uh, until the end uh, of the film, we are, um, we are, I've been really, uh, um, um, I would say, disrupted by, by this. Um, and only as soon as uh, the, the, the score uh, start to, to dissolve a little bit and to, uh, to dissolve time within uh, this um, uh, noise symphony, uh, then I felt uh, uh, comfortable because I could um, concentrate only on those um, kind of interview that uh, she did and uh, forgot the, the design that have been uh, uh, done around. So it was uh, like a focus, a focus that we uh, often uh, do. And after we fill the gaps with uh, uh, a lot of soundscapes, uh, but there, there was a, a kind of decision to, uh, to, uh, to keep it uh, that intimate, to keep it uh, that close, almost as I told, like uh, um, with Zakaria, we we had. I asked myself uh, on Zakaria's film, um, um, uh, how does it feel once um, um, somebody doesn't uh, doesn't uh, belong, so or be belong to a space or belong to. Uh, um, at the time or the other, because there was uh, in Zakaya's film a matter of uh, the father doesn't want to go back in this, this those memories, yeah, and um, so almost uh, the 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 images was in this space was uh, most of the time without uh, the surrounding space, and uh, I could I wouldn't uh, work like that uh, on that film. But I felt very comfortable with that because I could concentrate uh, fully on uh, on those different three perspectives. So it's all a matter of uh, uh, using the tools that we have and don't do not try to remake, uh, uh, recreate um, um, a reality, but uh, using it uh, kind of crude. Yes, and uh, it's a, a decision on both film. Uh, that I that I fully uh, not respect. I, I found that they uh, that they um, reach uh, their point with uh, their handling with uh, uh, the interaction That's between it. picture and sound. Okay. Want to add something, Sandra? On everything you're talking, you choose. 
you say it's Sandra? Sorry. Yes, I, yes, yes. I you don't want to interrupt. Um, I did have the feeling that uh, I watched uh, with intimate distances, maybe not not two films, but several films, and I could not connect uh, it in uh, in the beginning. I mean, I watched it now twice so uh the second time and the first time i was uh, also searching for of course i mean i did not read anything about it so i was sitting there and i wanted to be surprised and you were searching for uh, what is she searching for where are these messages coming from is it the voice over uh, that's talking to her and then you figure out oh maybe it's the it's it's the end uh, character that she found you know you're think, thinking about uh, or i was thinking uh, about that but that's what I what I liked so much about it because being uh, in this disconnected space where the formal aspect reveals itself again to me as an audience, I I really enjoyed that and therefore I did have the feeling that I kind of was on a multitasking level, but still could uh, enjoy her intimacy um, uh, even more. You know, like uh, having the feeling of a of a real conversation whether I did not know the first time when I saw it that it was a callback uh, audition tape uh, so I did not read about that afterwards uh, the device over comes from a, a audition tape right do you say it like this sorry yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah after knowing that of course uh, I did feel that this uh, meta level um, of this uh, casting process, so to say, was uh, I already felt it before, but when I knew it, I had the feeling it was a perfect uh, fit for me. And for you, uh, Alexander or Pedro, if you want to add to that. Yeah, I think that the, the, uh, I liked how the intimacy is like slowly, uh, mm, yeah, it's slowly increasing uh, in intimate distances. Yeah, you know, the, you uh, only understand her asking pattern if she uh, gets to the third or fourth uh, question uh, she has prepared, uh, which is like with the third or fourth uh, protagonist, so to say. And uh, uh, also the people, she's talking to get more and more visible as you understand uh, what she's trying uh, to ask them. And the first one is kind of blocked by the, by the traffic light. The second one is like blocked by uh, a, commer a, a commercial sign. Uh, the others are shown from the back. And then uh, uh, we see uh, we see people from more and more up close. You get the feeling that uh, people start to realize that there's a hand camera on street level. And uh, so um, I felt like uh, I was kind of sucked into what she's doing there and into this kind of performance. And uh, and still it, it, it felt like uh, it, it never lost this feeling of um, talking to strangers and this intimacy always felt like really surprising, although it was kind of developing through the whole film. And uh, that was um, a dynamic which I, uh, which I really enjoyed and which uh, surprised me this, uh um that's um especially the the conversation with uh, which ends ends with a hug uh, is the one where, where we uh, in the beginning we are really searching for uh, the two uh, the two talking and then we find them and it gets closer and closer and that's uh, and this dynamic uh, um uh, yeah is in the whole film and every uh, in, in in the whole uh, in the whole setup and I uh, yeah I kind of felt uh, yeah nearer and nearer and and that that's what I like. Yes, I, I just um, before just passing to Pedro, I, I had this feeling that I was multitasking and then I, I was you know getting used to the sound to the streets to the mic, to the voice over, and also the, the, the conversations, you know, we start with that guy that's from, he's a mariner or from army, and he's one in the charge of the conversation, you know, she's trying to, and but he's just like, okay, and you can see him, you know, completely, but at the very end, 
you, you, you see that the camera, the last conversation, if I'm not mistaken, you see that's a movement of the camera. So you try to approach us and to get closer, you know, even though the guy is a little bit like not wanting to talk, but he's talking. It was in that. So I think this is also, you know, a, a very clever choice because at the very end, you're very connected to all the stories and you, you feel part of the conversation. That was my, my feeling, you know, just like I, I, I was feeling like that I was stopping in the street, just like, you know, being part of it. And um, that's another level of possible intimacy that make, uh, goes if we go beyond uh, cognition. <laughs> and, but anyway, so Pedro, please. No, yeah, taking your, your reflection, it was, it's really curious that the, this fluent evolution that has of the construct, it's not a solid construction. It's like really mutating constantly. And I want to, because I so many films too, but they're so contrasting. And like, for example, for me, uh, it's like, uh, it starts with this voyeurism civilian camera point of view that it could be say it's like Hitchcock one or the conversation from Coppola. But then it starts to go to this uh, Chronicle of Summer kind of structure. And this is the way the works cognition. It's not that it's getting the intimacy between the relationship. It's, it's construct, constructing the intimacy or the verite of it in the spectator. So we can assimilate like it's getting more and more real. Uh, and that's, uh, I was thinking about some other abstract elements and um, because you're getting it more and more into this uh, ambient or you're buying it, sorry, it's a Mexican expression. You're falling more into the traps uh, of the narrative, let's say. Uh, like saying, oh, I, I'm a sect in your game. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. And oh, for example, from my point of view, I was engaged and engaged and engaged until the end. It's like you're so engaged and you want to cry uh, just because a guy asked for a direction to cross the street or something like that. And you're in lockdown using what? Using mask in your apartment. Anyway, no, <laughs> no but the thing that uh, uh, my point is in this that. Um, she it's really abstract as a character she's not really Marta and that she's only playing this mechanism that it's again the this mechanism of power that it's in a way it's Orwellian if we want to say the, the way she develops and it's still this cold uh, repetition and mechanism it it achieves the most warm human part and it's another beautiful contrast of the man uh, that he I think Philip uh, hides too well because in a way what she's doing is really cool and it's really like just trying to get what she wants. She's not trying to get the human aspect. She's work, she's doing a work and it's uh, just the most abstract thing that it's repetition, that it's the mechanisms of factories and things like that. And at the end, it's like taking the most human aspect of it. So it's yeah. like uh, a flower in the growing in the concrete in that way. Yeah. And it, in, in a way, going for the Zacharias film, I think it tries to do, it, it goes the other way around the mechanism. It's like, I want to I want to embrace you, Dad, but it's still this so cold a distance that it's not because of the camera. It's because of the system and the environments and the reality of the man. And Definitely. maybe questions that, you know, he passed all his life asking himself. And, you know, as uh, Alexander says, you know, he used the device to address things, you know, in their familiar relationship. You're saying something, Pascal, please. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I thought um, definitely about this. Uh, this uh, power uh, that uh, you can use with, uh, because uh, Sandra also uh, spoke about uh, uh, the documentary situation with the camera, with microphone, and uh, and um, uh, it's so so funny. Once I really don't want, for example, to uh, to speak with people. I want just want to record on the street uh, behind a door or somewhere. Uh, this is the situation where uh, most most of the time uh, people tell me their life yeah i mean uh, it's uh, you know you can be uh, i've been in um, in behind doors in um, in uh, really uh, heavy suburbs of uh, east german um, um, city and uh, the world production gets scared because they couldn't find me and uh, i've been at the end on the couch of a really white wing right wing uh, guy who told me uh, uh, almost all, all, the, all his life he's seen the microphone and this is uh, he's been looking for the camera i couldn't see the camera but he wanted he wanted to 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 speak yeah sure i wanted to uh, to have uh, something against me but after a while and in this uh, in in uh, intimate um, distances i felt also this uh, this power that uh, um, 
that um, this element um, or our tools uh, have and um, as you told Pedro in uh, in uh, Zacharias film it's a, it's a pity to to uh, to feel that this quest is so much uh, he, he, he gave so much in this quest but um, guess, um, got almost as less as this uh, this uh, pile of stones yeah that uh, we see almost at the end so um, I just wanted uh, with that to uh, enhance the um, um yeah the power of those tools uh, especially nowadays i can see it also in uh, many films that i see uh, of students and the, uh, how they how we can with uh, our tools um the film makers tools uh, camera microphone um trigger uh those uh, and and fill those gap um, of um, um social interactions yeah we are reaching almost um one hour of conversation and we have some uh, we have a question from uh, the audience that is watching us um, on and um gabriella link uh she she says uh good night uh if possible i would like to know if the production or direction team of intimate distance have asked all the people who appear in the mu the movie if it was okay to use their images and also how you as festivals curators and now ask uh, add something and you both as uh, filmmakers um, deal with the question of image rights. So it's about negotiation, how you negotiate, uh, you know, with your characters. And uh, maybe, I don't know uh, who wants to start with the information about the team production. Do you have that? This is also something interesting when you're not talking about those <laughs> with, with those who made the film. <laughs> as far as I know, I think, the, of course, he has a right to use the image uh, of the people. Yeah, and actually, he's really renowned to talk about some staging things that uh, haven't. He, he, he always avoids it. Uh, but and I think it's part of the game on the magic, or like I see, we'll do. We have a thing in, in, in Mexican expression that the magician never never says his tricks. How is that? Uh, but yeah, no, no, no. It's all about and, and about the other question. Let me think like two days and maybe I can come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I no, I do. I do think that's, of course, you know, that they had the allowance of, you know, moving forward. But I, I was thinking about that maybe when I, because when you see a lot of people on the street, you know, you can't get everybody's, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. authorization of, but anyway. It's, it's just like I was just curious, but how how is it for you? How you deal with this negotiation um, with you know people when you try to document their lives? I can relate to the question uh, because it is quite stressful. We uh, in my last film we also had some scenes that we shot in a, at a mall. And of course, you're like being everywhere and putting your signs out there that you're shooting. But still, I mean, you want to uh, have some moments and you have a lot of people there, like 300 people walking around and you have someone from the production behind running around like crazy and handing out sheets to get them. And of course you miss one or two of them. But I, I, the question occurred to me as well, I have to say. When I watched uh, the, especially the, I mean, at the crossing at this, you possibly it's impossible to have everyone's uh, signature. Yes. And I think in that sense, it's also, yeah, probably not that important. I think, right? Well, okay. I, I would say also it's uh, um, today or nowadays it's extremely regulated. Uh, Sandra told um, most of the. You need to have a bunch of per person in such a crowded situation um, to uh, with uh, uh, release sheets um, uh, in the hand and uh, running uh, all over. Uh, but um, um, I mean, it it changed uh, because um, it changed a lot those last uh, years. And uh, everybody not just want, uh, they need to, uh, uh, to stick on that because otherwise uh, uh, maybe uh, your film can't make it to, uh, uh, to a festival, uh, to uh, um, a release or um, 
but uh, it it do not change as much as um, as we think or our behavior as a as a, as filmmaker. I mean, um, it's a different organization. But I'm quite sure also uh, you've seen also in the um, in the film and um, um, intimate distances. You've seen that there was also a second camera uh, um, on yeah. on the street. There was. Um, there must have been some more uh, some more crew members um, to check uh, at least uh, the the interlocutors the person that she's been interviewing the second time I was watching I was thinking about the crew how they were working behind the cameras to manage you know because it's a, it's a big range and so it's a very you know a lot of people in the street at the same time and the, the crossroads. So Alexander, you wanna want you wanna take this question about um, how you deal with images, right? Uh, as a programmer or a creator, and uh... yeah, I mean, from uh, from a festival's perspective, uh, it's uh, pretty hard to judge if uh, uh, if the filmmaker uh, checks all the boxes. But uh, for us, it's more important uh, to see uh, if if there's uh, like a respectful uh, a depicting of people, and uh, that that's what we can uh, what, what what we can judge, and uh, everything uh, beyond that, it's pretty hard to judge for a festival. Yeah, I agree. That has to do pretty much with the conversation we had last Sunday with Tara Killing and Abhat. Uh, from uh, thinking about this relationship between what you see and what you decide to screen. And I think, and I agree with you, that's the limit. So it's just like, well, the most, the best we can do is that, you know, and, uh, and of course, believe that they made good choices. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's another- I mean, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go, 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 please. No, I mean, uh, I mean, Zacharias film is made at the, uh, High security non place. Uh, who knows if it, uh, if it was allowed for him uh, to shoot all these images? I mean, I, it's it's just hard to judge. I can't uh, just say that they make sense in the way they are made. That they uh, they are coherent and beautiful. But I don't know if uh, yeah if, if it's okay to film at the airport of, uh, on all these venues. It's hard to judge. So we have a, another question. This question is from our dear Dennis that is trying to bring us back to recognition <laughs> because <laughs> he said the group mentioned that the term recognition is something very general. Can you tell why it is difficult to you to discuss this film based on a general term? I'm, I'm glad now I'm with the, the moderator so I don't have to, add, to answer. <laughs> <laughs> the question i'm sorry yes uh, yes he said uh, that we mentioned that the term recognition is something very general uh, so he's asking us to tell why it is difficult uh, for us to discuss these uh, films based on a general term so, i will answer to the dear dennis and uh, in a way to answer the previous questions about how to deal with image i think it's because it's such a wide, <laughs> such a wide range to discuss, and it's only about find a middle term, I think. And to be fair with all the possible sides, I think. And in in this case, is the sides of I don't know the ethics of uh, I mean, flights and the record uh, and representation. And because recognition, it could be like it's super multi-layered that we can have like three different debates about perspectives of recognition. And well, I'm, I'm completely lost. You lost me. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think you 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 brought something to say that uh, maybe we should. Uh, I think for me, not, I, I was not supposed to answer, but anyway, it's about also qualifying what we understand it for recognition. You know, because what we're talking about, because we can set, for example, frame if we focus that on the choices about talking. I'm I'm more on um on um, the feature film, uh, thinking about interviewing only men and major non-white uh, males, you know, with, so I think also there's a crossroad that takes us back to uh, first in, first out and the immigration and being there and not being there, 
queens uh, who have been there, you know, there's a lot of immigrant people there crossing all the time. So, and uh, so what, what we, we consider recognition, our recognition of those men or their recognition of their own uh, trajectory related to the question, for example, you know, <laughs> just like, you know, kind of brainstorming on that. So I, I, are we talking about representation or um, we are talking for a more, or in the sense of stereotype representation, so what we expect from those men to be and what they really show us uh, in both films. I don't know, just, you know, putting things on the table. I mean, so, the, oh, sorry. Go, go, go. Uh, yeah, uh, as you said, it's a, it's a very privileged perspective also of us as filmmakers. And it's a like the strange aspect of watching in intimate distance uh, a ca casting criminals for uh, this or from this very privileged perspective of us filmmakers. And uh, it's of course, of course, uh, as Alex uh, said before, they are all, um, uh, how do you say, respected. There is, it's not a, like an, a question of dignity, but of course it's using people in a documentary context, like, you know, um, having this uh, agenda of casting criminals from this aspect and you kind of could think it's like using people as we use in documentary context and uh, if you remember like um, who was it uh, Georg Stefan Troller for example like a, a famous documentary filmmaker he uh, in Germany uh, once said we as documentary filmmaker are always uh, well what's the word for that Menschen esser Menschenfresser right can we translate it Menschenfresser we eat humans, man, man, eat man eaters, and uh, by wanting to capture uh, people's fates and identities and by kind of feeling the urge to dramatize it uh, in, in their real lives. And this is, of course, something that does not happen because uh, it plays with the formal, but it's a question that pops, uh, that at least uh, I had to think about when I was watching it. How did you feel about it? Who's next on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I could address the, the, the broadness of the term again. I mean, uh, even, uh, even watching first in, first out, I mean, uh, is it about identifying some uh, somebody uh, in the <laughs> sense of recognition? Is it about uh, confirming a status in recognizing something? Is it about uh, the camera who uh, which recognizes someone, but uh, only in part because it's uh, uh, because it's parallel to, uh, to memory? I mean, in, in, in so far, it's, it's it's a broad term, and in so far, it's it's uh, it addresses. Uh, Topics that are present in uh, in both films in a uh, in a fruitful way, but um, yeah, I, I guess the uh, that's also the starting point of being confused where to focus, and uh, that, that's why we had this conversation at the beginning. Yeah, I'm I'm you want to add something, Pascal? Sorry, I just wanted to say recognition. Uh, um, I didn't myself uh, wanted to speak about the term as a recognition uh, regarding to the, uh, both films. Uh, beyond recognition was for me uh, um, um, also a terminology that I uh, that I wanted uh, for this to avoid. But uh, both uh, both topics that you, uh, um, uh, Janaina and uh, Sandra, raised um, the. The point uh, of uh, of you the, um, of the viewer of uh, um, and and the one of the filmmaker are two different uh, mention fresa so, so, so the, the, the these as I told before these uh, uh, tools that we have with our cameras and and uh, and microphones uh, to uh, enter the uh, intimacy um, of uh, people and uh, uh, to bring them on the screen um, it is um, it is not a, a trick um, permit, uh, permitting a, a, a recognition it is not that each of the uh, viewer is uh, uh, putting his uh, or her um, own um, uh, perspective 
on the subject that uh, we are presenting. So uh, it means if in those films, for example, in intimate distances, uh, the first uh, reaction that we have, especially in, in Queens, and uh, her um, interviewing those uh, 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 male, typical male type, typical... Um, um, also um, foreign looking for uh, for a, a white um, world perspective a foreign looking person um, this uh, this first it, it intrigued me but once I'm looking at Zakaria's film I've got a completely different perspective than you 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 or you yeah um, because of uh, of the um, uh, of the story. I've been, for example, in uh, such a such a, a situation, and nobody, we, if we t use the term recognition, I recognize myself then more, much more in the in the uh, character than in the filmmaker. So it is, uh, um, it is always, I say, a slice of life uh, that is uh, uh, only eatable uh, by each of uh, of the uh, uh, person who is looking at the film. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Pascal. It's a nice way of putting it. So we have this uh, last uh, question before we wrap up. Um, Petra, Petra Palmer, that's also on uh, um, the week's uh, team. Uh, she asks, the programs had various films to choose. Why did they choose these? Did they think about how they work together? I think we are coming back from the beginning, you know, just like... <laughs> I don't like circle, I think I aspire to go somewhere else, but you know. <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts on that? Oh. Oh, and adding, because now the questions are <laughs> popping up. Uh, then it says, to quote Alexander, was it uh, a fruitful way of framing a film through language, for example, in the frame of the festival? He's quoting you, Dennis. Is, so they are together on this, Petra and Dennis, asking you both about your thoughts on putting those films together. <laughs> Alexander, it's your turn. <laughs> no, we're gonna, no, as I said before, it's about this kind of way that there, this is a, in the magnificent programming of Duisburg and the notes so magnificent but interesting of Black Canvas. There was a, a lot of uh, possible matches that we're discussing in a way because we were really delighted with, with what the other was suffering. Um, offering, not suffering, sorry. Um, but in this in this way, this how these films connect and the other way you contrast themselves and complement. And in another way, they're... The, the concepts in itself, we go back about the uh, Pascal uh, reflections, it's uh, different points of view on the perspective of the concepts. It's like showing the, the different ideologies, intentions of perspectives and, and points of view to a concept in itself and how they explore and complement. And I think that was the most, from my point of view, it's the most beautiful thing about our successful program, um, that they really match in, in the way of a thematic formal, but in a way there's managed to create the discussions between each other and then plan the questions. But I don't know if Alexander can say the same, maybe he's really the loser. Yeah. He's really sad about the, <laughs> the result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, um, I think that, uh, both films, um, like I said in the beginning, like they uh, they deal with tur with um, turning points, and they uh, deal with um, turning points in the uh, in the sense of um, turning points are like the material you make a story of, and uh, th these films reflect on that, and th both films reflect on uh, how a turning point in somebody's life. Uh, is uh, the material for a story, or could be the material for a story, and how you uh, how you manage to get uh, this story told by visual devices, and uh, this is uh, on the most basic level how I felt these uh, films are interconnected, and also that they uh, that they both uh, have. Uh, yeah, deal with how we communicate uh, in public spaces, like um, the uh, intimate distances 
pretty explicitly uh, thematizes that, but uh, the um, the content of first in first out is uh, is also uh, I mean deportation is also something like uh, the way it is depicted and the and the way uh, the the memory of it and the uh, perception of it, 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 it is depicted uh, also tells us tells us something about how we deal with it in, in public life so uh, I think that uh, in this way both films are uh, very much interconnected and that's what I liked about this programming yeah now that uh, oh there's another question Okay, the last one. Um, Gabrielle is back commenting on something. Let me read. I guess the team of First Teen First Out has permission to film in the airport because there is a sentence in the end of saying thank you to the airport. But anyway, I don't <laughs> care about the institutions. <laughs> I found First Teen First Out a really big and respectful movie. But about the other film, I disagree that they will, uh, they will uh, of someone regarding his or her image is not important. And sometimes I have the feeling that some essays, documentaries use people's bodies without authorization. And I'm not talking about crowds, trying to use their images as merely aesthetic objects. So anyone want to comment on that or to reply Gabriella's uh, concerns? No, I just want to say, I see if I uh, said it that way, or if you felt the, then I want to correct myself. Of course, I think it's important. I just have the feeling that sometimes as a filmmaker, if you're in such a crowd, you maybe uh, cannot catch everybody and uh, you still uh, keep on rolling because otherwise you would not be out there. And I think uh, we as filmmakers probably also, if someone would come up and would have a problem, even if it's uh, in the far crowd, you would deal with it then but yeah so i understand yes. the point uh, very much and i agree completely yeah i think um this um this helm of negotiation is always an issue a big one and if you're dealing with you know larger situations of course there's so many layers on that but i think um Pedro and Alexander, when they are talking about programming those images, you know, there's a main concern that you have that you agree that the filmmaker has, you know, taken care of and not being disrespectful to people. And, but of course, we understand also that historically, many uh, um, different groups in the world have been treated as objects, but this is a kind of coming back to the Sunday conversation in a way it's not only I don't believe it's about these films but you know it's a, a, a broader conversation about um, you know cinema and how cinema approaches people and you know and going down this as road but uh, and then yes and there's also a money a money thing you know how do you take care of thousand people walking in the street and get everybody authorizations you know so <laughs> I, I don't know, <laughs> I, I'm thinking about just thinking out loud. So, but it seems like our spiral has, is turning again to other points. Maybe this is a good uh, moment uh, to wrap up. I don't know if you have any other thoughts you'd like to share something we didn't address here. Anyone to bring to the table in this last moment? No, are we good? So. Thank you so much. It's been a, a real pleasure to, to talk to you um, and to watch those films. And, and I feel like I want to go back to them now <laughs> and then watch again, thinking about you know, some things that uh, we said here. And then this back. Um, so now it's up to you, Dennis. Hey, Welcome thank you again. All. Um, I have the same feeling. I want to watch them again now. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing your insights on the films. and. Um, I just wanted to um, let the audience know um, that, of course, there's more debates to come in the next days. I hope uh, you will all stick around. We are um, broadcasting every day um, from 8 p.m. Berlin time, and um, we have we have quite a few more programs to come. Um, I wish you I wish you wonderful um, additional screenings. I hope you can catch some of the films we are showing still. Um, we have, uh, besides uh, usual tickets, we have also fest festival passes you can get um, if you want to take it seriously and, and go through the whole program. Um, 
and um, all of our our tickets are there to to support also the Hakkashu Hilfe cinema in which we are usually taking place um, and which we have transformed to this beautiful um, broadcasting studio here. Um, so uh, stick around and I wish you a wonderful evening. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye.